Hi, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. So today we're going to do chapter 6, Chemical Equilibrium. And in this chapter, there are going to be three subtopics altogether. So we have the subtopic of 6.1 Dynamic Equilibrium, subtopic of 6.2 Equilibrium Constant, and then the subtopic of 6.3, the Lee Chatelier's Principle. And in this chapter, we're going to focus on the subtopic of 6.1 Dynamic Equilibrium first. So in this video, we're going to learn on how to explain a reversible reaction dynamic equilibrium as well as the law of mass of action. We are also going to state the characteristic of a system in equilibrium. Last but not least, we're going to explain the change of the concentration of the reactant as well as the product based on the curve of the curve of the concentration against time for a reversible reaction. So we're going to look about all of this learning outcome in this video. So without any further ado, let us start. So forward and reversible reaction. So forward reaction is basically a non-reversible reaction and goes only in one direction in order to form the product. And it is denoted by the single-headed arrow showing it to be like this, where the direction goes from a reactant towards the product. For the forward reaction, the reaction is continuous until one of the reactant is completely used up and the reaction stops. So you can look about the example below here. So you can imagine that one of the reactant is the excess reactant and one of the reactant here is the limiting reactant. So when one of the reactant is completely used up, the reaction is going to be stopped because no more product can be formed. And hence, when the reaction moves in only one direction, then it is known as the forward reaction. Okay, In one direction only. Yaitu satu arah. Meanwhile, for the reversible reaction, the reaction will take place in both forward and reverse direction. And most chemical reactions are indeed reversible. So, by meaning of reversible reaction, um, initially the reaction will proceed towards the formation of the product. Let's say, initially we have a lot of reactant, right? So, the reactant will move towards the product, which is producing product C and D. But as time goes by, the product can be turned back into the reactant, which is A and B. So the reaction of A and B going to C plus D can happen in both directions, which is that side as well as on the other side. And the example that happens for this reversible reaction is the reaction of hydrogen gas as well as the iodine in order to produce two mole of hydrogen iodide and you can imagine it to be someone in a treadmill so the person is moving forward but there's going to be a belt here that allows the person to move backwards so at equilibrium the guy will remain stationary and we know that it stays at equilibrium because the rate of the forward reaction is the same as the reverse direction all right now, we need to consider the following reversible reaction, which is a concentration of A going to a product B. So we're going to look into the concentration time graph for A and B respectively. So let's say at the beginning, which is at time zero, we have a certain amount of A, let's say 100 molar. But initially, which is at initial stage, the concentration of B, which is the purple color here, is zero. Okay. But as time goes by, you can see that uh, the reaction, the concentration of A will start to decrease by time. Makin lama, dia makin rendah. Warna hijau tersebut. Mungkin daripada 100, it can go to 60. However, the concentration of B, which is the product, will increase by time. So, from 0, it might go to 40 or 60 here. Okay, and after time T1, which is T1 is labeled as here, we can say that the concentration of A and the concentration of B remains constant. Okay, this the cartel So it's gonna be like 50 or maybe 45 here, and then here might be 55, let's say for example. So it just remains constant, and for B it will also remain constant. 
but it does not mean that the concentration of A is equal to B. Okay, tidak semestinya. Okay, the concentration of A is not equal to the concentration of B. What we know is that the concentration of A will remain constant after time t1 in which it had it has already reached equilibrium. Okay, and as the reaction proceeds, the rate of the forward reaction will decrease and the rate of the reverse reaction will increase. And when the rate of the forward and reverse reaction becomes equal, which refers to equilibrium, we can say that the concentration of A and B remains constant. Okay, so that's a constant and we will send that's a constant. And at this point, we see that they have achieved chemical equilibrium. And after time T1, the reaction still continues. It tidak berhenti. The masih berlaku, but it just goes in the same manner, which is the rate of the forward reaction is the same as the reverse direction. And this is known as the dynamic equilibrium. And to understand more about this point here, let us look into the next slide. Okay, so now we're going to look into the reaction rate, the graph of the reaction rate against time. Just now we have looked about the graph of concentration against time. Now it's rate against time. So as what we can see here, we have one mole of N2O4 converted into two mole of NO2. So at time A, we can say that the rate of the forward reaction is much, much larger than the rate of the reverse reaction, which is smaller. But as time goes by, which is at position B here, the rate of the forward reaction started to reduce, so it getting smaller in size. However, the rate of the reverse direction, which is the product going to the reactant, will get higher. So you're going to have a bigger error here. Okay? But at time T1, the system has reached equilibrium. And this is shown by the rate of the forward reaction is the same as the rate of the reverse direction, in which the magnitude is the same for both the forward as well as the reverse. But as mentioned, at equilibrium, the reaction did not stop. What happened is that the rate of the forward reaction is the same as the reverse reaction. And the concentration of reactant as well as the product will remain constant, but they are not equal to each other. Okay, they are they are adalah constant, tetapi A does not equal to B. Okay. Now we're going to look into the characteristic of a system in equilibrium. So there are three characteristics in which the system is at equilibrium. First, the reactant and product are constant over time. Next, the rate of the forward reaction is the same as the reverse reaction. And the reaction quotient, which is Q, is equal to the equilibrium constant. For this third part here, we, you will learn more in the subtopic of 6.2. So we're going to look about that in the next video. And for the type of equilibrium, there are going to be two types. So the equilibrium is a basically a state in which there are no observable changes as time goes by. There are two types of equilibrium, which is the physical equilibrium as well as the chemical equilibrium. Now let us look into the physical equilibrium first. So for the physical equilibrium, it basically involves a physical change in which it's going to be a changing in the state of matter. Okay, perubahan fasa. Let's say if you have a liquid water converted into the water vapor. So the chemical composition, which is H2O and H2O is still the same. What's different is, is at the states of matter. So from liquid into gas. So at equilibrium, the H2O liquid is at equilibrium with the H2O water vapor and the rate of the forward reaction is the same as the rate of the reverse reaction and it is only consistent when it is at the closed system. 
So equilibrium can only be achieved at the closed system, which means that there is no external pressure or external factors that gonna disturb the equilibrium. And as mentioned, the reaction does not stop, but it just happened to be that the rate of the conversion into water vapor and the conversion of water vapor into liquid is the same at that point, which is at the equilibrium side. For the chemical equilibrium, it will involve changes in the chemical composition. So let's say if you have the N2O4 gases converted into two mole of NO2 gases, we can say that uh, there are going to be a changes in color, which is from colorless into brown. So when we introduce some of the N2O4 into a surplus, which at cap at 100 degrees Celsius, we can see that there are going to be a changes immediately. So when we put the N2O4 inside the plus, we can see that the gas begin to turn pale brown. And the color of the gases in the flask will slowly darken, but after a while, we cannot see any color changes, which is at point C and D. And this clearly refers that it has achieved dynamic equilibrium because there are going to be any no color changes and they're going to be achieving a dynamic equilibrium where the rate of the forward reaction is the same as the reverse direction. So the rate of the conversion into the product is the same as the rate of the product converted back into the reactant. So at this point here, we can say that the reaction still continue, but the rate of forward and the reverse direction is the same. Okay, so I think that's all for today's video. See you again some other time. Bye!